Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord. Now, when we left off, we were in a war against Batania and we were actually doing pretty well. We were actually fighting them back very easily. We were able to eliminate many of their vassals. But now, unfortunately, it seems as though the Southern Empire has decided to make their move. And as a result, we now have this situation. Mantios's army is attempting to take, I would assume, this. Are they? I can't tell what they're trying to do right now because I'm not close enough. But I'm hoping that these guys are going to be done relatively soon. Yep, they're done. Okay, so that means that this guy was taken prisoner by us, which is very good. Now, I would like to try and see if I can help these guys out a little bit. Let's see if we can just try to uh, keep our lords alive. That's basically all I'm trying to do, to, trying to do at this point. Because, let's see here, this guy, for example. This guy could definitely use a little bit of a, an attack on him. We're moving at 5.9. He's moving at 5.8. I should really get this menu up again. I, I personally feel like the menu should literally be there all the time. But I understand why they why they did that. Because maybe some people don't want to see the, the bottom information that you can see there. But personally, I feel like it's really useful. But anyway, uh, the Batanian... Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you doing? What are you doing? Sometimes my guy tends to do things automatically without me actually wanting him to do those. So I don't know what's really going on there, but I would assume that that guy... Oh uh, yeah, I can't get involved between two of these guys. Okay, so let's let's just take him out now. There we go. Now bear in mind that I don't have a huge amount of HP, so I might very well have a bit of a problem. And wait a minute. Did, did my... Did, did my faction just give me this town as... as uh, did, do I own this town, actually? Oh, now I'm, now I'm kind of worried about accessing my kingdom menu. I'm going to actually save because I'm a bit worried because, you know, as you saw in the previous episodes, do seem to have a little bit of a problem with um, sometimes crashing with this. But anyway, uh, I would like to have a look at my fiefs. No, we just... Oh, they did give me this! Idiots! Why? Why? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't really think they're idiots, but the point is, is that I really did not want to have a situation where they actually gave me a town. They literally gave me a town in the worst possible moment. This is very upsetting to me. Ah, really, really bad. Okay, yeah, I would have loved to have stayed... But as you could no doubt tell, Mantios with his whatever, 500 and something or so units was there. And uh, most of our forces were not able to really do anything against him. So obviously that is a big problem. Now, I'm actually wondering, wow, this guy's got clan tier 6. What a beast. Well, he is obviously the leader of, of the faction. And most of these people are actually clan tier 5. I feel like I've done a very bad job in, in leveling my clan. But it, it does take quite a while, you know? It does take quite a while because you need to get 900 renown to be able to get uh, clan tier 4. And I think that takes quite a while. Is it just me? It, it feels like it feels like just me that's taking a long time to get there. But oh well, never mind. Maybe we need to take a look at our clan tab after this and see exactly how much we have to the next level. I think we're all we're basically like halfway, and that means that we have about 450 renown, which is all right, I guess. And uh, the thing is, is that do you think I could have? defended against 500 and something units with about 170 I'm thinking probably not because even though I was able to achieve a victory against those other people against uh, I can't even remember who it was now but uh, there was another fellow that we actually defeated in a siege defense a number an, uh, actually a number of fellows that we defeated and uh, well and that, that was not as difficult I feel but uh, maybe that was just because we were a little bit more prepared for it and most of my people were not unconscious or anything like that. So kind of didn't want to chance it, if at all possible. So anyway, just going to tell my forces to charge in. Going to tell these guys to charge in and, uh, well, everyone to charge in, basically. And uh, hopefully I will be able to eliminate this guy. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's so incredibly satisfying to get a kill with this weapon and I don't know why it just really really is maybe it's because I have have spent literally the the mo well basically 60% of this series being kind of useless on well <laughs> almost every level 
Uh, yeah, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything like that because I'm, I, I know, I know that I'm not exactly great at, at combat or anything like that, but, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to learn, trying to get better, and that's all, that's all that I can ask of myself, really. And that's all that you can ask of yourself as well, if you're also finding it a little bit difficult. I've seen a number of people say that, you know, mounted combat is very different to how it was in Warband. And I agree, 100%. I definitely agree that it's very, very different. But once you get the hang of it, at least I think I'm getting a bit more of the hang of it, definitely feels really nice. Feels really fun. And uh, there you go. That's a very nice victory for us. Another little bit of renown here and there. We have to do a lot to get to the next clan tier, as I say. Now let's have a look at this guy. He's got minus 80 relation. He is also a Sturgeon defector. And he also has the reputation for being ambitious. Oh, uh, that's actually something that I wanted I wanted to look at. Aha. Uh, okay, so yeah. We have the reputation of being devious. And we are actually age 38. Yes, we are actually age 38. That's like, what, 40 years younger than my actual age. I'm obviously joking. <laughs> anyway, uh, shall I take him prisoner? That is the thing. Hmm... I'm thinking I'm thinking probably yes because he's from the southern empire we don't really want them running around and doing a huge amount of damage to all of us so I'm going to take all of these looters as well because the looters are probably going to be used to shore up my various garrisons and things like that that could be very advantageous for us going to take a whole bunch of food too we don't have a huge amount of it as you can no doubt see and it would probably be a good idea to save some lordly padded mittens. Oh, I actually thought they were going to be quite good because they're lordly quality, but uh, they're apparently not that good. And everything else is not so good either, apart from this. Oh, hello. Imperial lamella shoulders. That is very nice. Oh, yeah. All right. So otherwise, let's see. So this is not as good as what she's wearing. Not as good. Not as good, kind of. This is basically the same, but a little better. So Jin can get a little bit of an upgrade right there. And yeah, she definitely needs something. Yes, as we know, she definitely needs something. Oh yeah, by the way, I did do a uh, another hideout mission off screen. And uh, I think I did that before the previous episode's recording, but I mentioned, I, I forgot to mention it. But um, this woman right here, El Yaksha, absolute beast. She literally, I, I, I was doing a little bit of testing with uh, the various things, you know, that you can do and command and, and so on and so forth. And I was basically making it so that I just told all my guys to charge in recklessly, blindly, because we were very easily able to eliminate the hideout, you know, so I didn't really need to try a great deal. But it was very interesting to see what our companions were capable of doing when they were going all out and they were being super aggressive and everything. And let me tell you, El, El Yaksha, our shield maiden, she literally killed an entire group of guys by herself. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> I'll step back. You go for it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, they can do a huge amount, especially the ones that actually have decent proficiencies in combat. And that's also uh, the reason why I kind of want to make it so that Liana herself can just relax, do whatever she wants to do in my party because she's an absolute beast in combat too. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Kind of hoping for her to kind of help us out there. All right, so uh, let me actually just take a quick look here because what I would like to do is probably take out a couple of people. Let's take out some Vlandians, take out some more Vlandians. And we got we got a Sturgeon Berserker. We could take one. We could take out a couple of these guys. Yeah, there we go. Palatine Guard. I I try to. I want to try and maybe take as many as I can. Oh, okay, so that's basically it. Uh, as far as I can tell, yeah, that's basically it. So yeah, that's fine. No problem at all there. And now we can go into the dungeon and we'll just manage the prisoners real quick. We're just going to put all these guys in there, and that is all fine. Did I actually level up? By the way. No, did did I not? Nope, my pole arms did though. Oh yes, yeah, there we go. All right, this is fantastic. So 70% more damage to horses. Personally, I feel like this is absolutely insane. I actually used to call myself the horse killer uh, back in uh, back in the original series of Warband because 
I was so bad, you know, I'm, I'm, go I, I'm, I'm gonna be the first to admit it, you know, I was so bad in combat when I first started playing Warband that I would literally only be able to kill horses uh, to begin with. And uh, that's because I usually found the cavalry versus cavalry combat in Warband to actually be quite hard in comparison to Bannerlord, where it's, in my opinion, quite easy, you know. But uh, yeah, so as you can see right here, we basically have in my opinion, this is the only option. 70% more damage to horses or 2% combat movement speed increase while wielding a polearm. Personally, don't think that's actually worth it, so I will go for the horse killer one. Let's see what the next one is. Couch lance damage increased by 30%. That's useless for me. Never going to be using a lance, or not, not much at the very least. And if an opponent blocks against your polearm thrust with a shield, he will be pushed back. Ooh, that sounds pretty fun. Okay, so let's have a look at see uh, see if anyone else has anything for us right here. So as you can see, Liena herself has 180 in absolutely everything in terms of melee. She's got seven in vigor as well. So, so she does a lot of damage, a lot of damage. And she's got some really insane skills too. I mean, literally, look at this. Larger shield protection area against ranged weapons. And she has an additional 10% damage if a one-handed sword weapon is equipped. I mean, really, that's a lot of, lot of damage right there. So that's a lot of fun to see her using that. She's also a lance user as well. And uh, you can quite clearly see that she's gone for the couch lance damage, obviously. And she's gone for the 2% movement speed increase. Maybe that's what I should have taken as well. I don't know. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, as you can see here, Kiroslava actually does have a focus point. And I guess I'll just spec her into riding skill. Accuracy improved by 15% while on horseback. That seems pretty fun to me. So I'm actually going to do that. Uh, anyone else leveled up? Jin is looking really good. She's great with bows. Lise is looking okay as well. Do I, I don't think I'm missing any traits. I think they actually take the traits themselves. Uh, I don't think I can actually do anything with that. And Alaska does need to level up her medicinal skills even further. And she will be specking into intelligence here as well. Because we need her to, uh, as I say, spec into medic skills a great deal. And uh, she's got decent melee skills, obviously. But medic is just so incredibly useful to us right now. And there's Pelosaur. <laughs> classic. Classic, classic. Okay. So, yeah. Let's, let's continue onward. Let's take a look at our clan. As you can see, we are at... Oh, we're actually at 652. And I need uh, 900. So I actually don't even need that much. So that's, that's not, yeah, it's not, not, not too bad. I guess it is kind of, kind of bad, but, you know, not too bad at least right now. Okay, so uh, we actually have something being attacked over there. We have a number of people that are actually knocked unconscious right now. Svana. Mm, do you remember Svana from our time with the Sturgeons? I think you do. Oh, okay, there, there you go. Liena has uh, also now gotten pregnant again. So there you go. We've, we've got another heir on the way, potentially. That sounds, that sounds good to me. And let's have a look at what she actually has in her army here. So she literally has 36 Sturgeon recruits, 21 Sturgeon woodsmen, and then everything else is basically just random stuff that is really not going to be that useful. In comparison, what do I have? I basically have no recruits whatsoever because they've all leveled up into something. But I do have a bit of an issue with the amount of units that are wounded right now. But she does have quite a few wounded as well. So, yeah, I guess we're just going to go in against her and we'll see how it works. All right, so here's the battle with Svana. I've actually already taken a massive amount of damage because one of them was lucky enough to poke me in the arm as I was riding by. That was not particularly good. Let's tell these guys to uh, get a little bit in better positions here. Aha, yes. So as you can see, the infantry has formed a circle. This is not going to go well for me, I don't think. Unless we can uh, kind of disrupt them a little, but uh, I feel like it's going to be quite difficult to do that. Oh, now they're coming out. Now they're actually coming out, trying to do some damage, trying to catch us unawares. And doing a pretty decent job at it, actually. But, uh, yeah, they just literally cannot do anything against the onslaught of our Vlandian cavalry. They really are just going to get absolutely massacred in this case. Which is absolutely fine with me, because Svana's units, you know, we, we know how, we, we know what she's like, you know, we know what she's like. She was, 
She was not exactly great, but obviously, <laughs> she, uh, I did, I did execute some people, so, you know, can't really blame her, you know, can't really blame her for, you know, thinking that we are not a very good person. <laughs> anyway, uh, she's gonna get taken down relatively soon, and that is indeed that. How many, how many units do, do they have remaining? I think that's actually it. Yeah, there's literally just a couple running over in this direction, and that is done. And we're gonna gain a, a decent amount of renown for this, not too bad. And we lost three units. That's also perfectly fine. And uh, because this is the first time we are taking Svano, you know, she's a defector to the Southern Empire. I feel like I should execute her, but I don't really want to in in the three strikes rule. You know what I mean? It's a three strikes rule. So I'm going to stick to the rule, even though I might want to. And we're just going to take a whole bunch of these people prisoner because uh, apparently a couple of you said that I should have taken some people prisoner in that siege a whole bunch of time ago. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, I, I definitely probably should have taken those guys prisoner, but, uh, you know, the last time that I did that, uh, I lost the Lord and the Lord managed to escape when I actually took those guys prisoner. So that was the only reason why I decided not to take them, uh, into my prisoner's hold, because if you go over the limit, then your the, the Lord has a chance to escape and, uh, didn't really want that to happen. So that was generally the only, the only reason why I decided on the alternate alternate route there but uh, otherwise okay so let's go in here and we'll just place all these guys in there and I don't want to manage them again thank you very much but I would like to wait here for some time and uh, I feel like I am oh dear right okay that was a bit worrying for a second 450 units just casually passing by okay <laughs> yeah that would not have been good Ah, it seems like they are actually attacking. Okay, mm-hmm. This is pretty worrying. I don't know whether we will be able to defend against something like that. If they come with 450, we might be able to defend the walls. Our walls are extremely good. You know that. You know, you've seen, you've seen our walls defend against uh, something similar. And uh, let's actually see. No, no, it's only 94. Only 94 units. Okay. We might be able to do something here before this is raided. Okay, so let's just have a look at his composition here real quick. So he has m many more good units than Svana did. But he still has 11 recruits. Mm, this guy might be kind of harsh. He might be kind of difficult for us. But we're going to go in nevertheless. All right, so I've positioned my infantry and my archers to hopefully take advantage of this hill on the right here. As you can see, the enemy is actually attempting to get into a circle, so I'm actually going to charge ahead with my cavalry following me currently, and hopefully I will be able to eliminate a couple of units just as I pass by and, uh, you know, just before they get into their formation, because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have a bit of a... Bit of a, a bit of a tactic here. I'm going to play a bit more tactically than I usually do. And that means that we want to put these archers around about here. We'll put these guys just in front. And we're just going to allow our long-range crossbowmen to do their damage. We're just going to let them... We're just going to let them shoot. Yeah, look at this. They're breaking formation already. They know that our Vlandians will do a great job from long range. And they know that they cannot hold position there forever. So we're going to tell our cavalry now to charge in. I think I'm probably going to end up dying if I charge straight at the archers. So I'm just going to let my cavalry charge in there first to kind of disrupt their lines a little bit. And we're going to tell my infantry to now charge in. And we'll see if we can do quite well here. Ah, uh, okay. I was hopeful that I might be able to... Ah, oh, never mind. Ah, <laughs> oh, classic. Take him out. What? They, they apparently have a mix of, of Sturgeon and, uh, and Imperial units right here. That's kind of interesting. Okay, was not expecting that. But I think that is indeed a victory for us. A very easy one, because let's face it, if they're literally just going to stand there in a circle, you know what we're going to do? Yeah, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to just wait there and shoot at them with our archers and that actually worked quite nicely in my opinion but let's actually have a look at our casualties because obviously I was expecting more casualties this time around and we lost two battalion volunteers, two pikemen, a billman, a militia spearman, a levy crossbowman and that's basically it. 
I personally can live with those losses, no problem at all. I think that's a perfectly acceptable loss. And uh, we got some uh, decent renown for that too. Anyway, I'm going to take this guy prisoner as well. I'm actually thinking of just ex executing all of them, to be honest. Because, uh, you know, if we, uh, if we execute them, then they can't fight for the Southern Empire. Hmm. That might be an idea. It might be an idea. Anyway, I'm just going to take this. Uh, we're just going to we we'll just sort sort by value for the moment and we'll see if there's anything good here. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. Sorting by value right now probably not the best idea because let's face it, I just literally have <laughs> so much money that I uh, I can't really get rid of it even. I mean, I could try giving it to someone of course, but that's basically not going to do much. Uh yeah, so Let's have a look and see where all of our friends are. Okay, so this guy is attempting to besiege this, I would assume. This guy is going to besiege this. And this guy is going to try and take back that town that was given to me. And we are over here, defending our little space. Uh, interesting. Okay, so I think the best thing that I can do right now is take this guy on. Hello. Why are you here? Are you trying to be a sneaky individual? I would not appreciate it. What does he have? He doesn't seem to have many recruits, actually. He's got a couple of peasants, so that might be kind of easy to eliminate. But uh, how fast is he actually running? Oh, here we go. We might have a bit of an issue with Achaku coming in from the side. Did you see that? He was coming in to support his friend. Very admirable indeed. Very admirable, but uh, definitely something to throw a spanner in my works, which I don't appreciate. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so what I was actually going to say is that we're going to go into the garrison here. And, uh, well, obviously I'm going to place my prisoners and all that stuff there. But uh, I'm actually going to take my Sturgeon units out. And they can be quite useful. So I am just going to be taking them out and we'll try to make the most of them. And uh, Sturgeon Archer. Okay, I'm actually over, over now. Mm. Okay. Am I still over? Yeah. I feel like what should happen is when I'm scrolling down, I should be able to see how many units I have here. And, uh, well, I can see from this bar, I guess, but it doesn't tell me what my maximum is. So you kind of need to know your maximum off by heart, which is 113, I guess. So... Uh, mercenary guard, I guess, and... Some of these rank 2 guys... Yeah, I need to just get rid of a couple more. Uh, I like the Vlandian crossbowmen. I think they're a lot of fun. So I don't really want to let them go. So I guess I'll just get rid of Sturgeon Archer, Veteran Archer, Berserker. And I think that's enough. Yes, that is indeed enough. Okay, fantastic. So now we can place all those guys in our garrison. And we are good. All right. So let's actually see. I was wanting, if at all possible, to... Hello. Aha, there's Achaku. Okay, so you, do you remember Achaku when we were with the Sturgeons? He was very, very fast on his feet because he has literally like uh, a huge amount of cavalry. Or at least he used to have a huge amount of cavalry. He doesn't have a lot of cavalry right now. And speaking of that... Let me actually just see what's going on here. So I'm going to just take a quick look. Cargo with incapacity. That's absolutely fine. It barely gives us any deficit whatsoever. Okay, so we're moving at 5.9, which I think is pretty fast. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and attack him. He's moving at 5.7. And he still has that grin on his face. Yours is not a face I know. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, did we actually not even... Uh, maybe we didn't even encounter him. It might be that he was just so fast that I could not actually get into combat with him. So that might actually make sense. But uh, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that speaks volumes, doesn't it? That I was just so incredibly slow at that point that I couldn't even catch up to him. Bear in mind that I did take quite a bit of time to even catch up to him this time. So yeah, pretty impressive for him to be moving that fast. But anyway, let's get my people into a nice shield wall formation and then we'll move them over there. And, yeah, then we can tell these guys to come with us as well. There isn't really any elevation, unfortunately. So I suppose we'll just have to use the natural elevation of the environment, 
I suppose that will basically be our best bet. Now, I will have to try and do some damage to these guys as much as I possibly can. Ah, that's not really working out too well for me. Come on now. There we are. Nice. That was a heavy horse archer. Yeah, they're more than likely going to be very effective. If they are anything like the Kurgit Khanate from Warband, then they will be very efficient. Seems like they're fine. My infantry... My archers are actually further ahead than my infantry now. <laughs> Classic, isn't it? Classic. Everyone's like, oh, please command your archers more. And then I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll command my archers more. And then I forget my infantry. Yes. <laughs> great, great. Okay, come on, kill this guy. There we go. That was easy enough, wasn't it? Okay, so, yes, otherwise we're just going to basically wait here, I guess. I'm just going to leave our crossbowmen around about there, and our infantry will go in the front. As you can see, we're actually picking off a couple of people along the way. And that seems to be working quite nicely. Uh, they have a lot of mounted units. That is to be expected, of course, from a Kuzate X vassal, I guess you could call them. Ooh, they blocked it. Yeah, they blocked that pretty nicely. All right, so I think I'm probably going to just move this way. We're going to tell our infantry to charge in. And then we are going to have all of the people following me charge in as well. And hopefully charge in from the back and do a massive amount of damage to them. So let's do that. Let's get these guys a little bit closer to the action as well so that they can continue to be effective. Heavy Lancer. They're just going round and round with each other, aren't they? That is amusing. Okay, there's a mercenary cavalry. They seem to have, they seem to have quite a lot of mercenary cavalry in their army as well, so that's kind of interesting. Is that guy one of mine? Yep. <laughs> See, that's the problem. That's the problem with uh, disabling the banners and everything. And uh, getting that increased sense of, of immersion and realism is that uh, you can't really tell very easily who's who. Uh, unless you can blatantly see. I think this guy's an enemy. Yep, there we go. And I believe that is it. My riding skill has once again increased to 46. Well, not once again, but has increased to 46, which is actually quite nice. And I think this is our last opponent right here. There we go. Nice. All right, how much renown for that? 12 renown. Exactly, exactly. This is the kind of fight that we want to have because we're just losing four units. That's really a very acceptable loss for something like this. And I think I think we're, I think we're doing pretty well. Look at that, 8,000 gold for that as well. Okay, so technically I could take him prisoner if I want to. And he has minus 100 relation. I literally should just execute the guy. I'm going to take him prisoner. Because, well, he hates us, basically. Alright, so we're having some issues with taking people into my army now. So I guess I will just leave these guys behind. I st I'm still over the troop limit? Oh, yeah, I am still over the troop limit. Oh, okay, by a massive amount as well, by the way. Okay, uh, Empire Peasants, Imperial Recruits, Sturgeon Recruits, uh, Warriors, Woodsmen. Wow, huge amount of Peasants. What? Why do I have so many Peasants? Okay, I'm still over my troop limit. Why? Oh, these are all prisoners. What? Why am I letting go of the... Ugh. Idiot. Idiot. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. This is, this is a little bit easier for me to do then. Okay, so... We now have enough. Uh, I thought I would be able to take them because we lost a, a couple of people, but uh, apparently not. So, unfortunate. Oh, oh, good, good. Good amount of cash. Uh, cash, yeah. Good amount of cash, but also food. And what else do we have here? Aha! Hmm, that's actually quite nice. A step half barding is going to be really nice for Laska, so we'll just give her that. That is really good. And anyone else use something a little bit better? I think she could definitely use something better. Jin, there we go. All right, seems pretty good to me. And now... What I actually wanted to do was take a castle nearby 
to my own castle so that I could potentially take ownership over it and uh, try to defend it relatively easily. But not entirely sure if I can make that work. Let's actually just have a look-see over here at this garrison. There's 196 there. Okay, that's probably not going to happen unless we call for our own army. But bear in mind that I don't really want to call for my own army if it turns out that, uh, you know, they uh, are pulled away from some other more important task that the AI might designate is actually really good to do. So that's also a reason why I t tend to be a little bit dubious about doing that because they might be, you know, close to defeating one of the larger enemies on the enemy's side and then all of a sudden I call them away and then it's kind of bad. And I'm not entirely sure why I took this Vlandian peasant, to be honest. So we're just going to dismiss the dismiss the peasant for the moment. And we will go back to Flintold Castle because there is actually someone attacking our village once again. Because they tend to do that quite often by the looks of things. So we're just going to go into the dungeon. And you can see here that they tend to escape quite a lot. And uh, that is a little bit frustrating to be honest. Because obviously I do all the work to uh, capture them. And then all of a sudden they're gone. So, hmm, might be, might be uh, needing to do something about that. But, uh, well, whatever the case, let's see what's actually going on here. Did they actually raid it? They didn't. Interesting. Very surprised that they didn't. Are these Batanians? Yes, these are actually Batanians. Oh, that's kind of hilarious. Oh, there's a Batanian hero. Very nice. Okay, so I will just, uh, well, not sell, but I will just take these back, and we'll just take the, uh, we'll take the Falksman, I guess. Actually, I can only take one. Are you serious? Okay, I guess I'll just take the hero then. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to have a look and see at this town as well, because there might very well be an opportunity there. Oh, hello. Tulag and Mina. Okay, hello. Let's see what you have. Wow. Okay, this guy's got 39 Batanian volunteers out of his 138. So technically he has 99 units that could potentially pose a threat. I don't see anything else that's super... A mm, couple of... Uh, well, they have one Palatine Guard and so on. Okay, so what does Mina have in her army? Nothing great either. All right, so I'm going to try and attack Mina if I can. I mean, she's much slower than... No, she doesn't seem to be much slower than we are. We're moving at 5.9. She's moving at 5.1. Okay, this is definitely a very easy chase down on our part. And wow, she's got some cool jewels in her, in her helm. Got to say that. All right, does she... Oh, she hates our guts. Look at that. Minus 98. Wow, okay, uh, yeah, so who are her friends? Because I might have, uh, aha, yes, this guy. I killed this guy earlier on, executed him, I think, or, yep, and that's her father. Okay, I 100% understand that you hate, you hate Barney's guts, because let's face it, <laughs> if he, you know, if someone kills your father, yeah, you're going to be pretty annoyed, aren't you? Yes, you're going to be pretty annoyed. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. And uh, obviously she's got some pretty decent units. I don't think they're going to be pushovers, but uh, we should be we should be cautious nevertheless. Let's tell my guy to uh, tell my cavalry to follow me and everything. Oh, this is a really oh this is wow this is cool. This is a bridge. I like bridges, bridges especially Jeff. That's he's he's very cool. Anyway. <laughs> You didn't think I was going there, did you? You didn't think I was going there. Anyway, this is going to be a pretty easy victory for us. I'm pretty sure all we need to do is basically just have our people just stand around about there, get our archers there as well, and then we should be fine. As you can see, we already eliminated one of their Imperial elites. I'm going to try and take my cavalry away from the bridge for the most part, because I don't really think I want to fight nearby to it, unless we can fight back towards it, if you know what I mean. So if we can do that, then we'll be in a pretty decent position. Okay, let's try and charge in now. Uh, not too bad. Did take a little bit of damage, though. 
little bit too much damage for my liking. Let's tell these guys that... Didn't I, didn't I tell them to charge in? I thought I told my cavalry to charge already. I am very low in HP. I'm pretty sure I'm going to die in this battle, potentially, which would be not exactly great. Oh, yeah, that 70% extra damage coming in right there. Very nice indeed. Okay, so let's just tell everyone to charge. I should have told, told my infantry to charge. That was a big mistake on my part. But it's fine. I realize these things, and I know that uh, I'm just going to get better with time about remembering those very small little details. Because let's face it, I have been playing Warband for many, many years. And uh, in general, it just takes me a little bit of time to get used to a new game. But uh, don't worry. In a very short amount of time... You know, give me give me a couple of years, and then I, I I might be up to you know average standard. So you know, just uh, just give me a couple of years, maybe three or four years. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding, or am I? Or am I? Anyway, there we go. That is indeed a victory, and uh, I don't exactly know where the enemy is. Ah, Mina, Mina is actually the one giving us a bit of the run around, right here. I do have my throne weapons, so I might be able to do something with those but she seems to be very strong indeed if she's able to you know prevent herself from dying against so many but uh, there you go all right pretty nice pretty nice and there we go all right so i can pay a ransom i am worth more to you alive than dead well personally because i killed her father i'm actually gonna let her go uh, yeah, she she obviously doesn't have a good personality. She has, uh, you know, because obviously, as I spoke about in a previous episode, if you don't know about Warband, you know, the vassals all have different personalities, uh, or, or different personality types, should I say. And uh, Mina seems to have a uh, either a pitiless or a sadistic um, personality type. So she generally doesn't react well to being let go because she thinks you're insulting her or basically just trying to taunt her by letting her go and having to suffer the shame of defeat and that's the kind of thing that's uh, that's going on there but uh well i did not want to imprison her because her father obviously i i i think i executed him i think so uh, i don't quite remember and that's 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 bad in itself isn't it you know it's just like you would, you know, oh, you, you killed my father, and then, then, then you go, no, I am your father. You know, that's the kind of thing that's going to happen there. But anyway, that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.